Hello and welcome to the video tutorial on Feedly, the free version. Feedly is an RSS aggregator and it is based on two components. RSS, or Really Simple Syndication, is a text file that allows producers to distribute their information online and in real time. An aggregator is a tool consumers use to gather information from online sources. So Feedly provides a platform for you, the consumer, to get your favorite information in real time all in one place from RSS feeds. Feedly brings the internet to you. So if you go to Feedly.com, there'll be a button for you to get started for free. You click on that and a pop-up window will provide seven possible account options to join Feedly. Once you've joined Feedly, you will be redirected to your Feedly account homepage. Now Feedly uses two terms for their platform. One is the word feed. See it here, it says on this button, create your first feed. Feed is a category to put all your content into. So you can have a category of cats and you could get online content of websites and blogs and podcasts and anything else you want from online sources to go underneath the feed or category cats. And down at the bottom of the screen, it tells you how you can add your content. Again, that content is your websites, blogs, videos. Feedly will handle all those sources. So let's go see an online active Feedly account. So I've created four feeds. I have EdTech, Education Library, and Professional because I'm an educator. Those are my topics that I have right now. And there are three ways that I can actually add content. I can add content by topic, website, or RSS link. To add a website is very easy. You simply copy the URL. You paste it into Feedly and it will match the sources for you. Now CBC has many different news sources. I would like the top one just on Canon News. I'm going to follow that. Now you'll be directed as to what feed you'd like to place that into. I don't want to have any of these feeds. I'm going to create a new feed. I'm going to call it News because I know that I have another news site that I would like to curate. So I'm going to create that and now it tells me that I'm following. I'm going to look over here and it tells me on my feeds I have the feed news and I'm actually following it. So now I'm going to add content with an RSS link. Now RSS links sometimes don't work very rarely but sometimes they don't and so this provides you an opportunity to do it yourself. Go to a site that has the RSS icon, click on it, you'll come to an HTML coded page, copy the URL for that page, paste it into the search bar on Feedly, and then a matching source will come up and you can follow that. I'm going to place that one into Educational Technology and now I should be following that under Educational Technology. The last way that you can actually add content is by topic. Now, Feely offers a number of different topics that are very popular and other ones that seem to be user generated. Underneath here, I can find education. So now that is my topic and Feely is going to match a number of sources to that particular topic. Seedly for sorts them by Feely score, which is a user generated data. They take you know, data from all different sources and then create a score based on that. You can go by followers, articles per week. Relevance isn't important because it's all education. So as we scroll down to see what I'd like to add, I already am following MindShift and it tells me that I'm following it. And I can continue and see if there's anything here that would be at least interesting for me. Cult of Pedagogy, that's one that a friend of mine talked about the other day. So I'm going to add that to education. See if there's anything else below. TED blog. I was looking for that the other day as well. I'm going to follow TED blog and I'm going to put that under education. And whenever you um, choose to follow a particular source, Feedly will automatically give you three other sources underneath it that you can follow as well. So now that I've gone and created my feeds and I have added the content that I want with them, how do I actually use this tool to my advantage? So there are several things that you can do with your articles. If you go up to the word today at the very top of this panel on the left, this will give me the articles that have come across my feeds today that I have um, not looked at and haven't done anything with. 
So if I look at these articles, each article has a number of icons associated with them. One at the very front, and if you go to the end of the article, it will give the other things as well there. And you can choose to decide what you want to do with it. So if I'm going to take uh, three good apps for social studies, I think I'd like to read that later. So I'm going to click on read later. Here are track changes in your shared Google audience. I want to have something to do with Google. I want to constantly create new um, information with my Google tasks. I'm going to see, oh yes, this is providing some information for me. So I'm now going to create a board. Now a board is a folder that handles specific information. I'm going to actually create a board for this. I'm going to call it Google Tools. Actually, sorry, Google Tools. And I'm going to create that board. Now I've got three boards and Google Tools and this tells me that this board is created and I've got to actually sign in and put that Google Doc in there. So now that will be in my Google board. And I think that is it. So now that I have reviewed all these articles and I've done anything I want with them, I don't, there's nothing else I want to do. I don't want to share out any of these through Twitter or LinkedIn or through email, Evernote or Hootsuite. So I want to actually mark them as red. And when I do this, they're going to hide underneath my feed. I won't see them again, but it knows that I'm up to date on everything. And now I have no recent articles. All my articles in your Feedly are older than a week. So that tells me that I have now gone through everything. I've created a Google Tools board. I have got all my feeds in place. I don't have anything left to go through to, to sort out. Um, I have one read later article. And that is how I can use all of those things to keep things organized and curated properly for me. Now, if we go up here to our avatar, I'd like to show you a number of other things that you can do with Feedly. There are a number of settings. Um, a lot of these you have to get a pro account for, and it's $5.41 a month. Right now, the basic package is working well for me, and I don't want to upgrade. I can also organize my sources. So these are all of my feeds. It tells me that I'm following 16 sources, but two are unreachable. So these are my sources. I can um, organize them by alphabet. I can organize them by the number of stories per month. I like to leave it this way because it tells me the reads per month, so I can do it. This tells me that I've read three things in Teach Thought, and they've taken me about two minutes each. So I like this way. It also will give me an idea of what I'm not reading from whether I want to delete those um, articles, if I want to you know, unfollow from those particular sources. Now here are the two that have been unreachable for me. The Adventures of Library Girl, um, she doesn't have RS link at this point, but she might in the future, so I'm gonna leave it. The School Library Journal, I really don't go there off enough, so I'm actually going to delete this. And I'm going to remove that source from my Feedly. So now I've got my sources organized. Next thing I'd like to show you is the browser add-ons. These are two that I think I'm going to look at eventually. You can save an article directly to a board, or you can save an RSS into your feeds. So I'm going to look at those later on. And then they have support terms and policies, and of course, log out. And that is how Feedly works. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thank you for viewing, and happy curating.